Hi everyone and welcome to the third flight of the new edition of Around the World in 80 Planes, this time in Microsoft Flights in 2020. We are in the Junkers JU-52 and we are flying from Macapa to Belém in Brazil. A relatively short flight, 187 nautical miles, but uh, in this plane it will take some time after all. Uh, so yep, here it is. And we are ready to go, and I'm going to start the Apollo 14 audio, picking up from where we left off. Again, it is condensed audio with the silences and static removed uh, for our viewing, no, not viewing, listening pleasure. So here we go with that. Let's see if it picks up. There we go. And we will proceed. In the previous segment of audio, they had docking problems between the lunar module and command module. Some of the conversation will be about that. So, we didn't really get to see this city in Flights in 2020 last time because we were in X-Plane 11. So, we'll take a little bit of a look around. Now I've got a tree pack, so I've got some nice autumn trees here. Minutes. At present time, Apollo 14 is traveling at a speed of 10,555 feet per second and at a distance of 32,283 nautical miles from Earth. Change of shift briefing is ready to begin now in the MSC News Center. Uh, we'll record any conversations with the spacecraft during this period of time and play them back following the press briefing. Also, there will be questions from Cape Kennedy uh, following the uh, following the briefing during the during the course of the question and answer period. At six hours forty six minutes, this is Apollo Control. Interesting how all the buildings seem rather flat, aren't they? They're sort of broad and very flattish. It's a very gritty this city. We'll pass over the airport minutes. once. During the change of shift briefing. Uh, we advise the crew that uh, it is being considered to have them remove the probe and drogue assembly uh, from the docking tunnel, pull it down into the command module, and activate the television so that uh, we on the ground and the crew can get. No, it's not a whole lot to look at. Piece of equipment. A decision to do so uh, will not be made in all probability for another 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, at that time. It will then require something like an additional two hours to get the necessary lines up between the uh, receiving end, the receiving station at Goldstone and uh, Houston so that the television uh, transmission uh, can be routed here to the control center. Yeah, we'll I guess we'll just continue. We'll conversations which we accumulated during the change of ship briefing and then continue to follow any other conversations live. Column 14, Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, uh, if you haven't already, we'd like you to continue on through the rest of the procedures in the flight plan uh, after the P-52 down to six hours, except don't do the O-2 fill cell purge or the wastewater dump. Okay, we're fine. And then, Ed, I uh, have uh, a longer update. Uh, I want you to do a P-23, the one that's scheduled uh, for about 9.50. So, this is the mouth of the Amazon, and largely what we're doing this flight is crossing the mouth of the Amazon. It's pretty big. Well, the, the lower portion is sort of connected in sort of a weird way, though. But Bellum is also sort of on the... I mean, it's it's a different sort of thing going on. <laughs> This is the main part of the mouth of the Amazon. Uh, Roger, uh, stand by one.
It's a very complicated thing. Okay, at, uh, on the, uh, P23, so, yeah, backward view of my compa. The same as listed there. I'd like you to change the P23 sighting attitude to roll 184. Pitch. Two. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to go again. Okay, as listed there at 42. Uh, roll 184. Pitch. 283 and yaw 310. Okay, the sighting attitude is 184283310. Uh, that's right. And we have uh, a change in the order of doing the stars plus a couple uh, substitutions. I'd like you to uh, use the listed star number three. Uh, that's uh, Gamma Centauri number 53. I want you to do that star first. Oops, no, I don't care about the engine starter right now. Okay, 53, Gavin Centuri is first. Uh, here and then uh, star as listed number two, number 236 will be the second star. Roger, Delta, I'll be again. Okay, and then the third star is a different one, a new one. It will be star 161, Iota Centauri. And Earth Far Horizon. Okay, star three is 161, Iota Centauri, EFH. Roger. The noun 70 for that star is the same as the noun 70 on star number one. It'll probably be easier just to write it down. That'll be uh, zero, zero, all balls on the first uh, register, all balls on the second register, and zero, zero, one, two, zero on the third register. And uh, noun 88 is completely different. First register minus seven five six zero three. Second register minus two seven one two niner. And third register minus five niner five six six. Over. He goes with all zeros instead of all balls. <laughs> There's just an uh, island in the middle of the delta, the Amazon delta. So it's the uh, one in front of us. Third register zero zero one two zero, and you don't need a noun eighty eight for that one. Over. Okay. Dump. And then uh, the 
The uh, activity to follow is still under discussion here. We're uh, talking over possibly uh, removing the drogue and taking a look at it at that time and uh, possibly uh, cranking up the TV to give us a picture of it back here. So uh, the decision to start PTC after finishing the P-23 will depend on whether we're going to uh, request you to give us a TV shot of the drogue. Over. PTC is the thermal roll that they do and of course that complicates the transmission so if they want to do a TV transmission of the drogue they want to wait before spinning up basically. Uh, I guess it's listed there and it's also uh, the, the same thing you skipped back there at uh, 5 hours and uh, 55 minutes. I guess that's a move. You want us to do it immediately after the P-23 or wait until the 11.25? All right, just stand by, I'll uh, check on that for sure. Yeah, do that immediately after the P-23, yes? Gotcha. And one other thing while you uh, have your pencil in hand is a uh, liftoff bus 15 P-37 block data when you're ready. Audio tape. 14 Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, go ahead. Uh, we didn't quite understand when you wanted us to start this uh, P-23 that you passed in. Uh, right now, whenever you're ready. Okay. Again, there are substantial gaps between these clips sometimes. Apollo 14, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Uh, Roger, Stu. Uh, when you get ready to commence your P-23, we have a change to the sighting attitude uh, based on uh, your current estimated time of starting, over. Okay, and uh, hey, could you give me an estimate on, uh, on this? Are you wanting us to press on into that right now? Uh, or you want to go ahead and get the suit stuff so forth. Well, it's, uh, it's really your option, Stu. Uh, whenever you conveniently get ready to run a P-23, why, why don't you uh, check with us and we'll make sure you've got a current attitude over. Okay. Yep, we've got some gusts. Eh, very minor. This is Apollo Control at uh, 7 hours 38 minutes. That completes the playback of the taped conversation ah, those between taped. spacecraft and mission control. Uh, we'll now continue to follow for any live conversations with the crew. Uh, the capsule communicator at this time is astronaut Bruce McCandless. McCandless relieved uh, Capcom Gordon Fullerton. At the present time, Apollo 14 is traveling at a velocity of 9,776 feet per second. And the spacecraft is 37,248 nautical miles from Earth.
Okay, Bruce, I agree. Go ahead. Apollo 14, this is Houston, go ahead. Okay, uh, Houston, I'm uh, getting ready to start the, uh, the C-23, and uh, I guess uh, that last P-52 will still be good for this, and I'll start into the optics cal attitude and then get your uh, burp 49 attitude to start uh, after that. Okay, and I'll check and uh, see if we want to update our uh, attitude uh, from the one I got here in front of me, and we'll pass it up to you when you're ready. This is still the main portion of the mouth of the Amazon. That's verified. And then we cross a fairly large island before the sort of secondary branch, which is where Bellum is sort of situated. This is Houston. Uh, change yaw angle to plus one two zero. Okay. I feel like maybe the passenger view view might be better, but <laughs> uh, it's all right because we can't really see very well sideways through here. Maybe if I had my track IR on. This is Houston. Uh, Ed, we'd like you to read out the pitch and yaw position meters on the high gain antenna for us, if you would, please. Uh, Roger, the pitch is reading uh, minus 90, and yaw is uh, 150. Roger, minus 90 and plus 150. Minus 80 and plus 150. Okay, uh, Bruce, how about that attitude for the uh, P23? The attitude will be roll 179er, pitch 280, yaw 310, over. Rod 179, 280, 
This is Apollo Control at 8 hours 12 minutes. At the present time, the crew aboard Apollo 14 is preparing uh, to begin a series of star sightings. Uh, they will do this in computer program 23, taking sightings and marks on three stars to update the onboard guidance. So this is Marajo Island. Oh, well, I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. M-A-R-A-J-O. Uh, here in Houston at the Manned Spacecraft Center and also at Large North Delta Island. Island. Down in California. Teams of engineers are in the process of putting together a set of procedures and evaluating the uh, tasks involved in uh, running through the a set of checks. Bottom of it is the, the Para River, which is a tributary of, of or distributary, sorry, and, uh, distributary uh, of the Amazon. Controllers here in Mission Control have had a chance to evaluate them. So again, the main part of the Amazon is behind us now, but there is this Para River. And also bringing up the television to transmit television pictures of the evaluation back to uh, Earth. Uh, once that decision is made, uh, it's estimated that it will take about two hours to get the lines up between Goldstone and Houston so that we can receive the television picture. Apparently, there was an advanced civilization on this island called Mara Joara, M A R A J O A R A culture. But apparently, now it has a large water buffalo population. I'm just reading Wikipedia here. So that's this island here. And more than likely, any television received He's like a good place for a water buffalo. Later playback and would not be transmitted live to Houston. However, the, the plan would be to transmit television live from Goldstone uh, some two hours after a decision to remove the probe and drogue uh, was made. Our best estimate on uh, when that decision might be made uh, is that it would probably be no sooner than 30 to 40 minutes. We'll keep you advised uh, on any changes in that. At uh, 8 hours 15 minutes, this is Apollo Control. Yep, the civilization on this island had different phases starting in 1100 BC. 30 minutes. Apollo 14 now traveling at 9,163 feet per second. The spacecraft is 41,842 nautical miles from Earth. The uh, flight dynamics officer reported that uh, there appears to be a very small amount of venting uh, occurring uh, on the S-4B. The uh, venting is not probably causing any uh, significant effect to the trajectory of the vehicle. However, it does affect the tracking data on it and uh, makes it difficult for the flight dynamics officer to get a good vector on the S-4B and uh, from that to compute uh, a predicted impact point. However, it is possible to compute the impact point based on the known position at the time the last uh, propulsive maneuver occurred, the LOX dump and from that to compute an impact point. Uh, based on the flight dynamics officer's computed impact point, uh, the booster officer... I think we can go higher up. ...needed Delta V, and uh, at nine hours ground elapsed... I'm nine, not guessing nine, that there's going to be and, too and much detail here. ...system maneuver with the S-4B targeted to impact it near the Apollo 12 seismometer. Uh, there's been no communications with the spacecraft uh, for the past 30 minutes or so. And the crew is scheduled to begin a sleep period uh, at about 16 hours. At uh, 8 hours 32 minutes, this is Apollo Control standing by.
Apollo 14, this is Houston. For your information, the booster people are planning an apt burn on the S-4B at uh, 9 hours GET even over. Uh, Roger, thank you. I'm wondering what units my altimeter is actually in. Um, oh, millibar. Well, no, that's the pressure. Can you get rid of this yoke right now? Well, that's a rudder ratio. Yoke visibility, yes. Um, now it's hidden. Kilometers. I don't know about that. 0.8 kilometers. Uh, stand by on Doesn't seem to match with 5,900 feet. Good angles and stuff for you. We'll send them up. Okay, we've just been moving around here. We've lost track of it. Roger. Eight kilometers doesn't match well with it either, so I don't know what we're reading there actually. Oh, maybe that's oh that's oh that's just the that's just the tens digit. This is the main thing, but still. Is that right? There's a follow control at eight hours. One point nine kilometers. We're standing by now for the beginning of the. They had to put it on two uh, different dials. Auxiliary propulsion system maneuver, which will target the Saturn third stage to an impact point near the. Okay, all right, yeah. Uh, Apollo 12 seismometer. That will be a four minute and 12 Fair second enough. burn. Fair uh, enough. Targeted to put the third stage in uh, at about uh, one. Point fifty six degrees south latitude and thirty three point twenty five well, west. The yoke yeah, covers the, up uh, the main digit on the altimeter. <laughs> we don't have a, a good attitude for you to look out right now. Okay, well look around uh, here quickly. I guess that's all right. I can sort of guess what the unit Guess digit in the out. altimeter would be. Hey, Roger, it's going and now. we've got this indicator out here too. This is Houston. Uh, you can try looking out the right hand side window and uh, with your line of sight depressed a little bit from the straight out position. In fact, guess yeah. where this engine bell was. Alright, the sun's coming in that window. Okay, that's probably going to make it very difficult to spot. Makes it a little hard on the eyes. Again, what you're going to get around to? Say, we'll get around the doing description for you after one off. All right, here. Yeah, it's more or less the same all the way around in this area.
booster officer reports the burn is complete. Burn has been completed, Ed. I've got it on. I didn't notice anything wrong with it. You may be a little subtle for me, but go ahead. <laughs> you obviously found it and it's working. Apollo 14, this is Houston. I have a flight plan update for you. Roger 14, we have a P-52 that was previously scheduled in the flight plan at uh, 9 hours GET. We'd like you to hold off on that P-52 uh, until after PTC is established and then run it uh, while in the PTC mode. Uh, after your P-23s are complete here, we'd like you to perform the oxygen purge and wastewater dump. Also perform the Delta V test and null bias checks as called out in the flight plan at nine hours and 20 minutes uh, GET previously. And then you can deactivate the primary evaporator uh, at your convenience. Uh, and we'll be having instructions for you on uh, what we want to do on, with, with respect to the probe and drogue. And I guess that we'd like your commentary uh, or your feelings on uh, how you'd feel about uh, pulling it out and reinstalling it this evening before you uh, turn in, over. Okay, you want the uh, P-52 uh, originally scheduled for nine to be done after PTC is uh, commenced. On O2 purge and water dump. And that will be secured now. And we'll do the Delta V test and L bias check momentarily since the uh, 23 has been completed. We'll discuss the probe and call you back. Roger. And. Uh, oh. As far as the people saying that the scenery in x 11 is worse than flights in 2020, that is true, but it really doesn't matter a whole lot in this area. <laughs> uh, flights in 2020 is not doing much around here either, to be frank. Yep, the next flight in x 11 in will be the next flight. Go ahead, 14. Now we're flying a 727, okay, so we're uh, way high up anyway. Copy. 
This is Apollo Control at 9 hours 27 minutes. Apollo 14 now 46,539 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 8,544 feet per second. We're still awaiting the arrival of a list of uh, questions and procedures from the engineering support room. Uh, these questions will be uh, passed up to the crew, asked of the uh, Apollo 14 crew, and uh, used in part as a uh, basis for a decision as to whether or not to ask the crew to remove the probe and drogue assembly from the docking tunnel of the command module. At 14. Regarding the probe, I don't think we might take it out tonight. Uh, I'm with you letting you look at it, uh, and then leaving it out for the night. Okay, 14, uh, we copy, and as I uh, mentioned earlier, we haven't really uh, gotten all the inputs yet on uh, what we want to do, whether we'd like to uh, to do this tonight or whether uh, we might want to wait until tomorrow, but I'll get back to you uh, as soon as we, we have, and we'll incorporate your feelings into the decision down here and uh, send them back to you. And uh, did you copy on... Uh, my flight plan update, uh, we'd like to get the primary evaporator deactivated uh, whenever it's convenient. The primary call. evaporator. Okay, it has been deactivated. Okay, thank you. That last remark came from uh, Al Shepard. Shepard uh, stated that uh, the crew would not mind removing the probe and drogue assembly tonight, but they would prefer not to have to reinstall it tonight before uh, beginning their sleep period. And as you heard, Capcom Bruce McCandless advised the crew that a decision has not as yet been made as to whether or not uh, the crew will be asked to remove the drogue and probe assembly. Uh, discussions are going on at this moment around the flight director's console, and uh, we're still awaiting uh, the uh, engineering data, uh, which will also serve in part uh, in making that decision. At 9 hours 30 minutes, this is Apollo Control continuing to stand by. Uh, you started with minus 100 on the null bias check, and you terminated with minus 99.4. That's correct. Those two bridges have been completed, and uh, wastewater dump is in progress. Roger up. Uh, 14, this is Houston. Would you prefer to take time out to have something to eat or uh, press on with the drogue operations now? I think we can do both simultaneously. Uh, Roger. You know, I thought on the drug, Bruce, just to get it out, uh, look at it, discuss it with you, and give you some time to think about it, and tie it down here with us while you're thinking about it. Uh, Roger, we're uh, tentatively looking at uh, taking the probe out, doing that, tying it down, and uh, we may want to take the drogue out, but we thought you could just uh, lock the drogue back in place and then the hatch uh, to go to sleep for the evening. Sounds good. Okay, and uh, be right back at you in about a minute with uh, the hot smoking word. <laughs> Hey, uh, Bruce, are we going to get in? 
our TTC uh, before we start in on the drove? Uh, that's unresolved right now, Stu. Okay. Snowstorm. All right, here we copy. Guess the little stuff coming off of something or another. This is Apollo Control at nine hours thirty nine minutes. The decision that's been made with respect to the drogue and probe is that the crew will be asked to remove the assembly. Uh, they will also be asked to uh, unstow the television camera, get television uh, coverage of it. Uh, however, the television lines will not be put up between Goldstone and Houston in order to avoid a two-hour delay. Uh, the TV signal would be recorded at Goldstone for playback later, and uh, the evaluation that would be done this evening would be uh, a verbal evaluation from the crew with the TV to be recorded for playback at some later time. At uh, 9 hours 40 minutes, Apollo 14 is traveling at a speed of 8,438 feet per second, now 47,557 nautical miles from Earth. This is Apollo Control at 9 hours 42 minutes. There's been a slight modification to that uh, plan as far as the TV is concerned. The crew will begin as soon as uh, convenient to remove the probe and drogue assembly. Uh, however, the lines will be brought up from Goldstone. This will probably require an hour to an hour and a half, uh, and any uh, television that uh, is received at the time the lines are up uh, will be released live. And uh, uh, television until that time will be recorded. Uh, so there is a possibility that we will get some live television uh, toward the end of the probe and drogue uh, activities aboard the command module. And the network uh, controller is taking steps now to uh, get those lines up between Houston and, Houston and uh, Goldstone. The estimate is that it will take, uh, at this point, an hour and a half uh, uh, or perhaps a little longer. Uh, oh, there we go. Houston, uh, we're showing about 15%. A longer pause than usual. All uh, right, we've just shut it off. We're showing 22. All right, you're out. Apollo Control at 9 hours 53 minutes. Uh, here in Mission Control, we're proceeding with preparations for the uh, removal and evaluation of the probe and drogue assembly aboard the spacecraft. Uh, a probe and drogue have been uh, brought into the control center and will be used Aha. in directing the crew. They finally have a sample. And then uh, familiarizing uh, uh, flight controllers with the 
uh, various aspects of the probe and drogue, probe and, uh, drogue assembly that will be discussed. Uh, capsule communicator Bruce McCandless uh, has the assembly sitting near the base of his uh, console and will use the, uh, uh, the assembly in directing the crew uh, to perform the tasks that uh, will be asked of them and, uh, and discussing various aspects of the assembly. Again, to repeat the plan as far as television coverage of this uh, activity is concerned, the uh, crew will uh, remove the, actually they'll vent the tunnel between the LEM and the command module first, then remove the command module hatch, uh, activating a handle on the probe assembly, which will collapse the assembly and allow it to be removed from the tunnel, and finally removing the uh, drogue, if if required. Uh, this whole operation requires on the order of 15 to uh, 20 minutes, and will be followed by uh, a detailed examination with questions prepared in the engineering support room uh, here at the Manned Spacecraft Center and passed up to the crew for their response. Uh, about two hours and eight minutes of acquisition time remaining at Goldstone. It's estimated that it will require about an hour, uh, perhaps an hour and a half, to get the lines up between Goldstone and Houston so that we can receive live television. The crew will be instructed to unstow the television camera, and television uh, pictures will be recorded until such time as the lines between Houston and Goldstone are up. At that time, we will receive live television transmission uh, following the uh, completion of the evaluation of the drogue and probe assembly. We will uh, play back the recorded television. At 9 hours 56 minutes, Apollo 14 is uh, 48,956 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 8,369 feet per second. Well, I hope the PAO plays the, the television bit for us on this loop. Usually they do. Apollo 14, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, Ed. Uh, He's yawning there. Like to do on the, the probe removal, uh, or actually the whole uh, probe inspection shooting match. <laughs> uh, we'd like to uh, remove the, the tunnel hatch, of course, and if you make a uh, a quick visual inspection there to see if there's anything that uh, looks significantly amiss. Uh, see anything we'd like to photograph it and in this uh, whole sequence we would like to have you power up the, the television and send a picture down which we'll receive it at Goldstone and record uh, although we still have about uh, an hour or an hour and a half before we could be configured to receive the television back here live then uh, pressing on from there uh, if you want to make a couple of notes on a pad, we'd like you to perform the probe removal in accordance with the decal with the following exceptions. Uh, Better hold up a minute, Bruce. Okay. It's an odd altitude to hold, but it's two kilometers, yeah, I think. Apollo Control at a little bit. Hours, Let me see. Minute. Our network controller has just reported what uh, is perhaps the fastest hour and a half work we've seen in some time. He reports yeah, a little the bit over two kilometers. And ready to receive live television from There's Gold a zipper Star. on this yoke. So uh, hopefully when the crew is ready to begin removing the probe and drogue assembly, uh, we'll have live television of that uh, activity. Go 
ahead, 14. He's in the yawn there. Roger, actually, uh, we'll be looking at uh, page S2-6 uh, for the uh, the changes. That is the section that applies to both TLD and LOD. Over. Okay, I'm ready to copy. Okay, uh, top of page 2-6, the first step, uh, probe umbilicals disconnect and stow. We'd like you to verify proper connection of the umbilicals before you uh, disconnect and stow them. And uh, I guess you might take a look uh, for vent pins, contacts, all that sort of stuff. Down uh, at about the sixth line down where it says uh, capture latch, release handle lock, rotate counterclockwise to unlock. Uh, we'd like you to verify that it is locked. I actually to told the sim that I wanted 70% of fuel to start off, but we only started off with 50. I think we'll be all right, but okay, go ahead. that was cheated of some uh, fuel here. Just lines. saying. Further, you have capture latch, release handle, pull, rotate to unlock 180 clockwise, and we'd like you to pay particular attention uh, to whether there is an unusually high uh, torque required. Uh, to unlock the capture latch release handle in this step. And we'd also like you to uh, verify the absence of or report any damage to the pyro cover or to the uh, capture latch release handle. And the, the pyro cover that we're talking about is the uh, it looks like an extruded metallic shell just forward of the uh, capture latch uh, release handles there. And it's the one that uh, bears the decals on it that say cocked and unlocked over. Okay, you want damage to the power cover in front of uh, And any damage to the capture latch release handle. And then as you pull it out, we'd like to know if you notice any uh, unusual forces required to remove the probe. Okay, let me read it back. Okay, go ahead. At the top of page S26, uh, the probe and chemicals. Before we disconnect the storm, you want to verify that they gave earlier properly. Yay, verily. Yay, verily. And then, uh, one, two, three, four, five, capture latch, release handle lock before uh, rotating counterclockwise unlock. I want to verify again that that is locked. Roger. And if you would like for us to pay attention to the torque required to loosen uh, any of these items. Oh, that's the capture latch, release handle. And uh, you want us to observe for any damage to the power cover or the capture latch release currently have the lines from Goldstone back to the building up here, so I think that uh, we'll probably be ready to support uh, via TV almost in real time. And uh, for onboard photography, uh, we're recommending use of the uh, electric Hasselblad uh, set on F2.8, 1 125th of a second at uh, three and a half feet. Uh, magazine O for Okamulgee, which is stowed in uh, Alpha 13, and uh, you might verify the f-stop with the spot meter set at ASA 64 if you have the chance. Over. Hmm. I really wonder whether the sky is supposed to be this clear. I thought about getting okay, Bruce, I got that, I believe, uh, the electric which my call it REX 2020 uh, really Weather Force because I don't like I still don't trust the stock uh, weather the at all that it's actually rendering anything like the uh, actual weather at the locations. 
course, it might be tough in this area, but still. Uh, Thinking about that. Because every so often I hear thunder and lightning and all. And uh, there aren't any clouds. And, uh, or not enough clouds. For about another uh, hour and a half. If that's any problem, uh, we can reconfigure to uh, pick up honeysuckle. And the shutter speed uh, is 1 125th. That's 1 slash 125. Over. Apollo Control at 10 hours, 13 minutes. We're still standing by for the crew to uh, begin begin the operation of removing the probe assembly from the docking tunnel of the command module. And we do expect that we'll have live television coverage of at least a portion of that activity. Uh, we have one hour, 50 minutes of Goldstone acquisition time remaining before we uh, expect to lose acquisition from Goldstone and uh, pick up primary coverage from the Honeysuckle site. At the present time, uh, Apollo 14 is 50,322 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 8,234 feet per second. Uh, with Capcom, Bruce McCandless at the console, our uh, Apollo 14 backup command module pilot, Ron Evans, and Apollo 13 command module pilot, Jack Swiger. Bruce McAnnis was really a great Capcom. <laughs> of course, he spent a lot of time not, uh, not flying as an astronaut yet. Had to wait until a shuttle mission. I don't know what the longest wait between being picked as an astronaut and actually flying is, but it was a while. All right, here we're uh, standing by down here. We've got the the color converter going, so we can watch you in glorious living color and just uh, glorious give us living color. Ready to go. Of course, Bruce McCandless was a Capcom on Apollo 11 as well, so he's old hands on this. That was Ed Mitchell reporting. It will be about 15 minutes before the crew is ready ready to begin the uh, probe removal operation. Uh, 14, this is Houston. When you get around to the uh Hatch removal in the tunnel. We'd like to get a LEM CM delta P reading prior to your equalizing the pressure. Over. Uh, Roger, Bruce. Uh, we'll give you that. Roger. How's your peanut butter? Peanut butter? Alright, we're there. Hey, Big Jack, uh, not enjoying any peanut butter. Yeah, what's up with, what do you mean peanut good butter? Good job. Don't know what all that means. There we go, there's our route it's finally showing up on the map. So we're more than halfway through, which is good, because fuel. Uh, Roger, if you're about wound up on eating, I've got uh, a correction to the uh, in-flight erasable load of TFM for you. And uh, we'd like to suggest a change to the DAP to open you up to a five degree dead band and save a little fuel over. Okay, we'll call you back a minute. Roger. Okay, 
Roger, Apollo 14. This is a correction to the in-flight erasable load procedure for TFM as found on page G9-4 of the GNC checklist. <laughs> Under column B, line 04, now reads 33304 and should be changed to read 35242. Line 05 under column B now reads 07000 and should be changed to read 03262. Over. I need to get that drone cam so I can pan this a little bit more. Actually, a funny thing is that the track IR can pan it if I use it. Uh, Roger, that's, uh, page nine but then it also can throw uh, off the camera under the OID sometimes, position it in a weird way. In column B for buffalo, you'll find the entry Water buffalo. Three 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 zero four. <laughs> Sorry. That should be changed to read three five two four two. Over. All right, and the next entry directly below it on OID line 05 now reads 07000, and that should be changed to read 03262. Over. Okay, 05 Bravo should read 03262. Roger, read back correct, and uh, on your DAP, we're recommending an R1 load. Okay, I see you've got it already. Sorry about that. This is Apollo Control at 10 hours 59 minutes. We're standing by for the Apollo 14 crew to begin removal and evaluation of the probe assembly. We do anticipate having live television coverage uh, through Goldstone, and our network controller is making arrangements for uh, satellite coverage from Honeysuckle so that uh, uh, we would have television through Honeysuckle also after we hand over to that site. At this time, Apollo 14 is 53,866 nautical miles from Earth. The spacecraft velocity is 7,900 feet per second, and we'll continue to stand by. Apollo 14, this is Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, Houston 14. Uh, I've got the camera set up, and we're starting to work on the tunnel now. Roger, we're configured, and uh, let me see if uh, we're ready to have you send it down. Roger, let her rip. We're now getting a television picture. Uh, Stu, Ow, that was a uh, loud canard tone. Would you give us the MCM Delta P? Ow, that's uh, loud. Oh gosh. Uh, Roger, Bruce, and it's uh, point 0.5. I understand, mm -hmm. zero point 0.5. Apologies. Roger out. The beeps are way louder than they are. If I turn it down, we can't hear them. Ah. <laughs> uh. That's 
Ed Mitchell giving us the reports on the pressure differential. The spacecraft now 54,477 nautical miles from Earth. The uh, greenish looking object floating on the end of the white tether is uh, what is referred to as tool E. It's a hex head uh, screwdriver. Slightly different type tool. sort of landscape around here. Sort of a reddish thing going. Al Shepard reporting that the probe umbilicals are properly connected. Uh, that was one of the things that uh, we had asked him to verify uh, before uh, removing the probe assembly. Our best guess, uh, best guess at this time is that uh, Stu Rusa is the uh, crewman working in the hatch area. Activation of the handle uh, allows the probe mechanism to collapse inside the tunnel and uh, makes it possible for the crewman to remove the assembly. three-pound probe assembly is uh, collapsing, uh, sliding down out of the tunnel now. Okay, the uh, capture latch uh, release handle turned uh, very easily, uh, Bruce. Roger out. You didn't notice any uh, damage to the pyro cover or anything like that, did you? No, I uh, I didn't, Bruce. I uh, I looked it over here with a flashlight, and uh, gee, I can't uh, can't see anything out of the ordinary. We'll uh, we'll drag it down and uh, take a look at the outside of it. But I didn't see anything wrong with the with the power of, uh, cover or any of the connections or uh, anything like that. Roger. Typical. Obviously, they do want to figure this out. They are going to have to try and dock again around the moon after the lunar module separates and heads down for the landing. And, uh, Stu, while you're at it, would you say that it, uh, the force that it took to remove the probe up there from the tunnel area was uh, high, low, or indifferent? Or nominal? Well, uh, uh, you know, it's the first time I've done it without uh, gravity helping a little bit and uh, pushing back, but uh, uh, I wouldn't say it was excessively hard. I, I sort of braced myself on the bottom of the tunnel and gave a pull and she came loose. I'm feeling like the train's getting a little bit more varied here as we get closer to Bellum. I see the head of uh, Commander Alan Shepard uh, just behind the probe. Okay, uh, we'd like you to uh, examine the probe head as you're 
now doing with uh, particular emphasis on any evidence of uh, unusual shear pin uh, uh, shearing in the, the bushing hole there at the end or uh, foreign material in the capture lodge release button area or foreign material or damage uh, anywhere in the areas of the capture lodge hooks. Probably a sensor uh, problem. It's always a sensor here problem. At the, uh, very tip of the probe, uh, you know, where the, uh, the tower hooks on it. It looks clean. Uh, I don't see anything fishy about that right off the bat. Uh, that's up at the bushing on the end you're describing me, Stu? Yeah. Okay, 14, we'd like to get some close up photos of the probe head around the uh, capture latch release button uh, of each capture latch hook. And uh, if you find any scratching or damage up there, uh, that area in particular also. Okay, good. I can't hear you. Alice is Houston. You're coming through very weakly. Can you uh, maybe put the mic closer to your mouth? I think that might be a problem. <laughs> Pelham seems like a busy place with all that stuff. Quarter of an inch. Uh, was that uh, width or the depth of penetration or length or what? Over. You know, I was trying to describe the depth of penetration. Uh, and it's very difficult because I don't have any kind of a gauge on it, but it has scratched the surface uh, to the depth of, uh, I don't know, uh, three or four thousand. Maybe. Very definitely scratch. Just rough to the touch. Now I'm confused, Capcom. Is that <laughs> the scratches of three or four thousand? Okay, I uh, understand you're saying they're about three or four thousandths of an inch deep and uh, the order of a couple inches long. Uh, that's right, they're very in length. They all, as I said before, radial scratches leading away from the apex of the stroke. And uh, some are uh, about two inches long, and one's about uh, one inch long, one's about three quarters, and one's about half an inch. The mark is made by the capture lights as a redoxy attempt. And in fact, it's cut into the surface of the drove. Roger, we copy. Well, more river systems okay, going well, on here, around here. Get through taking some photos up there. On this yeah. side of the island. Uh, we'd like you to take the capture latch release handle, uh, pull, rotate it counterclockwise to the cock position, 
and then manually depress all three capture latch triggers at the base of the capture latch hook simultaneously and verify that the capture latch release button should move forward to the lock position flush with the probe pushing. Okay, uh, why don't we do that and then uh, when we get all through, uh, we'll go through and get uh, the pictures you want. Roger. And uh, we're going to bring the, uh, the drogue out too, so uh, you Take a look at it uh, on the TV. Uh, Roger, Stu. And after you do get it out, we'd like you to uh, hold the TV steady on the area of the drug where the scratches are for. I think we'll go lines. down now. Uh, do likewise again on the uh, capture latch area on the. Slowly. Front. I see the Para River there, and obviously our location is on the opposite bank. Not a whole lot to see on this trip. There weren't any points of interest to uh, aim for. We're now looking up into the uh, docking tunnel toward the lunar module. Uh, 14, this is Houston. Uh, we're getting a, a picture, but uh, the illumination level isn't very good, and I guess I, I for one, can't see any scratches right here. Uh, it's pretty hard to see in Houston, uh, just the light level. We're going to try another little trick here. Let's see if we can get you some light. Okay. We can see uh, about five or six of these radial scratches in the present scene. Right, right where you're looking there, about three of them. One. Yeah, that's a, that's a permanent group. Okay, now, I guess that uh, at the four o'clock position you've got a, about three scratches and then at uh, eight o'clock you've got one uh, so we're going BLA for noon. SBBE seems to be a lot of airports around here we'll take a good look at it I think we have the fuel for uh, fly around Okay, you want us to push all three 
14 Houston, we're requesting medium beam width on the high gain antenna, and we're going to have to hand over from Goldstone here shortly. Can't hear you. Okay, I guess that's uh, what we really wanted to know about it. Uh, 14 Houston, if you could, uh, on the TV pictures, refrain from using the flashlight uh, in close here. I think we've got enough light to to see it with the uh, ambient light. Okay. Maybe you do, we don't think so. <laughs> Especially don't aim okay, the flashlight yeah, directly at the camera. Over, so we're gonna just go into a standby mode here for a minute or so until high cycle picks up. Okay. Finally departing this island. Marajo, and, uh, I suppose it's pronounced. That, uh, you've got the capture latches in a locked position out there. On the end of the probe, we'd like you to uh, push as hard as you conveniently can in zero G on the, each of the capture latches and uh, verify that they do not depress. Uh, we've done that one good again, and they don't. Okay. that we are now getting a uh, television signal from the uh, station at Honeysuckle Creek, Australia. I think I see the airport there, or an airport. There's a lot of airports. Uh, nope, that's not the airport. Uh, that's something else. And 
push it over the capture line. Because we're not pointed no, directly at the airport. Well, I guess we'll find and, out what that uh, is, because there's definitely I buildings guess over there. I this several times, and uh, try applying different combinations of offset, side load, and torque on the thing. And then we'll and, head uh, north. Check it up for any indications of dragging, binding, or anything that might be given the problem that you uh, had experienced a few hours ago. Okay, uh, stay again, uh, uh, like, like a heightened black and black and capture match in the way we just did by pressing the button on the end of the drone and then putting it over the uh, end of the drone at certain times and the beat is up. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, and uh, if you put the uh, the probe in a fixed place and then put the drogue over it, you could sight in through the hole in the end of the drogue and keep a good eye on things. Okay, 14, and uh, one of these times when you have the, the drogue on over the end of the probe, you might try just holding the drogue in position and uh, wiggling the capture latch release button in and out several times. Uh, in this condition, it won't do anything, but it will allow you to assess the possibilities of binding or sticking of that uh, particular part of the mechanism. I think that town in front of us is called Arcarena. Uh, Barcarina might be a little bit further on. Uh, there's uh, Villa dos Cabanos most immediately here. And uh, up the road, have you had any, uh, it's Barcarena. Luck, I guess you could call it, in getting the uh, probe and drug to bind by applying uh, lateral forces to the uh, drug. Uh, not yet. Stand by. We're getting ready to try it again now. Okay. Uh, Seems to be some sort of thing that, going uh, on here. We're gonna put the uh, drogue back in. Now's on the other side. There's and, uh, seems to be a bridge uh, here, uh, or a tunnel. There, uh, Not totally clear. Right. I mean, I think that ought to be a bridge, yeah, right? Side, no, the on the map it doesn't show anything. That's I don't know what's going on there. Maybe a tunnel then. So there's okay, Villa right, uh, Dos Cabanos we'll and then uh, oh, up ahead you can sort of see Barcarena there. <laughs> uh, yep. It. Yep. That's what they're saying. Uh, would you pass over to Al that while you've got the probe and drogue in the tunnel there and made it, he's on the other side, uh, and keeping them engaged, would he push the capture latch release button in and out several times and see if he can make it stick up against the bushing by pushing sideways or anything of that sort on it while it's being pushed in and out? Okay, we'll try that. Uh, 14, this is Houston. While you're up there in the uh, tunnel, we'd like to get a uh, roll angle readout on from the uh, index mark uh, as you come back through. And uh, with respect to further procedures, I guess we got a uh, a radiant coming down here, which is a uh, step that says uh, 
Further instructions will follow tomorrow. Didn't quite understand all that, Bruce, but try to try it again. Okay, uh, we're asking for a uh, docking tunnel roll index reading uh, at your convenience. And okay, we got that. You've exhausted uh, our imagination for right now on uh, troubleshooting the probe. Uh, we'll work on it some more overnight and uh, be back with you in the morning. Well, over across that water is that 10 uh, area up front. That's Bellum. So and, that's where uh, we're we headed. Confirm that uh, Al was unsuccessful in getting the uh, capture latch release button to bind up against that pushing in the end of the probe. That's a, that's a City of 2.08 million, then that's eight years ago. So probably more than that. Okay, well, holding the, well, holding the probe in that's place a nice there, view we're, here. Uh, wanting him to just take and here it's better than uh, x Men 11 in terms of scenery. Doing his best to bind it up against anything he can find there uh, in the way of the internal surface of the bushing. I Over at our origin, the buildings to... were not nearly so nice. Okay, well, we hadn't really run that specific test. Uh, we'll try that. We should probably land sooner rather than later, though. Down to seven percent now. And uh, keep the probe over in the command module. Uh, we believe we've seen enough TV data for the time being, so you can shut down the television at your convenience. And we would like to get uh, photographic documentation uh, of the capture latch release button of each capture latch hook and of any areas of scratches or visual damage on the probe. Head. And uh, Houston, the uh, knocking roll index is plus 0.9. I understand uh, plus 0 0.9 or on docking roll. That's firm, Nick. Well, there's some actual buildings out there. Houston, uh, you're cleared to uh, start getting set up uh, for PTC at your convenience. Uh, we'll be watching the rates, and on this first PTC initiation, we'll probably want to go very close to a full 20 minutes of uh, rate damping, although we expect that uh, on subsequent ones during the mission, we'll have a better feel for it and just be able to uh, cue you as to when to initiate the roll based on the rates that we're observing over. Okay, understand, and uh, we don't mind waiting 20 minutes. Roger. Uh, Apollo 14, this is Houston. When you uh, do close the hatch in the limb, we'd like you to give us a mark so that we may confirm the floodlights are off over. Roger, we're, we weren't intending to rush you on it, just uh, when it happened, give us a yell. This is Apollo Control at 12 Okay, so here we are, Bellum. Uh, we're in the process now. I feel like it's the first really large, the large city that we have Jerry visited. Griffin. To replace uh, Flight Director Milton Windler. 
uh, during the shift that is uh, just ending, uh, the, the Windler team came on uh, just after the Apollo 14 crew had successfully completed docking on the uh, sixth attempt. Uh, that occurred at a ground elapsed time of four hours, 56 minutes, 46 seconds. Uh, following that, the... There seems to be some blue here. I was successfully... Oh. Uh, I don't know, that, that, that looks like a truck driving on water there. System hmm. Evasive maneuver and the subsequent I think some of these roadways are not proper the in that they're blue. They're water. Which will the moon Maybe in the they're below the water or something? I don't know. Kilometer. Yeah, there's some over there too. The, uh, flight dynamics officer had a bit of difficulty in I don't know. The, uh, exact impact coordinates due to a a small undetermined, uh, a small venting from some undetermined origin on the S-4B. Uh, the venting apparently having no significant effect on the trajectory, but uh, affecting the uh, data on which the trajectory is computed. And at this point, our uh, trajectory analysis is not uh, too precise. We expect that it, uh, oh, with additional the autogen that, uh, just decided to the disappear. That's not nice. Uh, will be more precisely established. Our uh, airfield is over to the uh, left the there. The one we're headed towards right now is the not SMB the one we're going for. At, uh, 8 degrees 34 minutes south, 23 degrees 17 minutes west, at a ground elapsed time of 82 hours 37 minutes. And following the uh, mid-course correction on the uh, S-4B, uh, the crew was advised that it uh, uh, would be desirable to remove the probe and drogue assembly. Uh, okay, time to go activated. back into the cockpit. To, uh, Hopefully we have enough to, to get to our runway. Could be found. Uh, after going through a series of 12 step-by-step -step, uh, items, uh, the only conclusion that the crew was able to reach was that there was no obvious defect with the probe or drogue assembly. <laughs> uh, the drogue was reinstalled in the tunnel area. Uh, the probe is, uh, has been left out and uh, additional troubleshooting uh, will be done tomorrow uh, after the crew completes its sleep period, uh, giving the uh, engineering support people in Mission Control and at uh, Downey, California. Uh, some additional time to... See a uh, missing stadium there. ...area to uh, proceed in troubleshooting next. The uh, booster systems engineer is just reporting uh, status on the... Uh, S-4B, the Saturn third stage. He reports that all tank pressures appear to be down to zero, and uh, the booster is in a stable configuration. Uh, no further activities planned with the Saturn third stage. At uh, 12 hours 24 minutes into the mission, Apollo 14 is 59,996 nautical miles from Earth traveling at a speed of 7,395 feet per second. Power 14, Houston. Go ahead. I've got a comm uh, configuration for you to set up in here for PTC. Okay, fair enough, stand by. Uh, okay, let me verify uh, the flaps. The, uh, okay. High gain uh, pitch and yaw indicators. Looks to fine to me. Minus 52. And yaw 270 degrees. Uh, then select Omni Bravo. Roger. 52, 270, Omni Bravo. Okay, and then uh, track uh, 
Uh, to manual and uh, wide beam uh, probably would have wanted a higher approach. Yeah, oh well. Okay. It's tough to tell with an old plane like this. Uh, Okay, at uh, waste storage vent uh, can go to close oh, and there it is. configuration uh, one and two to off. There's gotta be trees right in front, huh? So be it. Very Amazon. <laughs> okay, uh, Fred Al's uh, closed the limb hatch and uh, he verified the floodlights went out uh, went out before the hatch closed. Okay. That's I saw it here. Hey, Much happen. tropical. <laughs> Say again? Uh, they saw it down here too on uh, the power, I guess. Okay. And uh, I'd like to clarify one thing. Uh, it seemed like Bruce implied that we would uh, keep the uh, probe in, in oh, here we've with us, down. and uh, we'd just like to store it in the uh, in the drove for the night. It's so easy to just open the hatch and get it back out again if we want to dissect it tomorrow. And the runway? It must be the runway. There's yeah, a uh, crossing that's runway that's right. here. Okay. I don't know where the next taxiway is. I can't even tell if I've and sat uh, back 14. on my tail yet. Not quite, it doesn't look like. Go ahead. Okay, I'd like to verify uh, that you have the uh, waste storage. I guess we'll just wait until the end of the runway. Yeah. I think I'm still off my tail. Get on, get down. Okay, that's uh, verified. I'll uh, retract the flaps and all. We're still venting the battery. Okay. Okay. Oh, this doesn't have that turn. I'm, I always misjudge the turn radius. Uh, okay, fine. We're going this way. All right, we have arrived. There's fuel trucks. All right, I'm just gonna park right here to get some impromptu refueling. Uh, don't go on your nose here. Okay, parking. All right, they're still sorting things out. Uh, I'm gonna pause it right there. We have arrived at Bellum. Next time, uh, 727 flight and X-Plane 11. Uh, and I think it's Fortaleza that we're going for next. And so that's a fairly long flight, but it'll be a very high flight. And the 727 by FlyJSim is a very nice plane. So i uh, look forward to that. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.